Way back in the middle of last year, Ellie and I went all the way to Silverstone. Uh, you may have seen the picture of her parked outside the Porsche Experience. We weren't there for the Porsche Experience. We were there for the Mazda MX-5 Experience. And uh, I'll warn you now, this video contains gratuitous footage of me driving a modern car. So I apologize for that. But as it's anniversary year for the MX-5, I thought it was about time I cobbled this video together at last and um, let you see it. it really is cobbled together we were trying to film it um, as best we could on the day there wasn't much time with each car um, and there was far too much time on track having a lot of fun but here you go this is my mx5 celebration right let's go and have a drive of a mazda mx5 mark one look at even straighten the steering wheel lovely dry day um it's going to be exciting here we go then I have a navigator who may be chirping in with instructions, or maybe just doing videos. I might even try and give you some intelligent conversation. Which way are we going? Right about left? I have no idea. Um, straight across Silverstone Roundabout. Well, I think that was that one. Wasn't and it? that case, turn left at the roundabout. We're looking for signs for Dad Dadford 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 Stowe. Stowe. start the day in the purest form of Mazda MX-5. This is the 1989, I think, 1.6. So it's not got oodles of torque, but it's quite entertainingly zingy. But maybe we will actually slow down to the speed limit. You see we've got our headlamps popped. They're obstructing vision quite nicely. But this car has done 35,000 miles, um, so it still feels very tight. Although, mind you, Mazdas tend to do that even when they've got loads of miles on. Lovely, neat little gear shift. Nin 90 degree bend there as well. Well, not quite 90. Yeah, there's enough power for it to be entertaining, certainly. remember the speedometer is probably visible. Maybe if I put my hand there. All is well. We're all gonna die. Hopefully not. Right, I've taken over on navigating duty while well, Callum has a drive. Hello. And for us, I am in a 1.6 Mazda MX-5 with the infamous <laughs> Mr. Hubler. Hello. I have a confession to make. Uh -huh. I really, really have never liked these. Ever. I've driven a few, but because I'm a huge MGB man, I even have a beard. It's mm. not quite as impressive as yours. Um, these really kind of killed all that off. And the MGF, oh, come on. Oh, the MGF in comparison did feel a little bit damp. But I've got mm. to tell you, um, this, this little number here, which has only done 35,000 miles, uh, it's actually really rather sweet. I have a horrible suspicion I'm going to end up falling for this by the time we're finished. It's entirely possible they do have a habit of doing that to you. But at least the stalks are the British way around. I've still managed to get them wrong though. Uh. Well, as you can probably experience, um, I'm not used to anything that handles or has power because I'm a Land Rover man. Yeah, it's not like a Land Rover. No, no it doesn't because um, even though it's raining and we could put the soft top down, it would still leak less than my old CDs. The one thing my CDs doesn't do is accelerate. I mean, holy mother! Not bad for a 1.6. I know. It? I mean, blimey. What are they? 115 brake, I think. But then again, there's obviously no weight behind this. No. That's why I'm interested to try the later ones because well, the, these are very light and very pure. But modern cars aren't very light and very pure, so how does the modern MX-5 compare? That's because it's got things for safety. I mean, there's no airbag in here as far as I'm aware. Nope. But then again, as Alec is going to say about his Mini, with handling and responsiveness at this level, it's our own fault if we have a crash. Yes. So we see. It's 
quite a Moorish exhaust note, but it does feel wrong treating a car with only 35,000 miles from you like this, considering it survived all these decades. It gets the oil circulating, it's fine. Oh, listen to that! It's an engine that wants to rip. Oh man, it's such a happy engine. Yeah. I can really see why these sold like hotcakes. I mean, back in the day, they can't imagine they were actually overly expensive, certainly not compared to your XGS convertible or your Porsche. What does a new one start from these days? 22? I have 22, absolutely 000? no idea. Hope that doesn't really have anything to do with new stuff, so I'm completely off the ball. Naturally, neither does auto classics. Unless, of course, it drives like this. It's going to be interesting. It just handles. I mean, most other contemporary journalists might kind of get a bit bored by how old it is, but compared to its, its kind of forebearers, your MG midget and everything, it doesn't leave you in a frenzy screaming match when you go around the corner at speed. No, it's pretty incredible to think that these cars are approaching 30 years old. That's madness. I mean, I'm not all that much younger and it's aging better than I am. Things this car has in common with me include a spare tyre. And that's literally about it, because I'm not sporty in the slightest. You've got a fairly sporty hat. Sadly, because of the speed, the needle's actually blocking the final digit of what I need to see, so oh. it's not a racing excuse, but I'm going to have to slow down so I can see what mileage I'm doing. It's also a racing it's excuse. Right, I can see it from here. So, got another mile. You see, my, my Dacia, that I've just bought back from Romania, has a slice in the needle, so it doesn't block any of the numbers on the odometer. So that's, um, so that's, that's ACR1 Mazda Nil. Yeah, that's communism for you. <laughs> Sorry. Ian. Fun even in a 30 zone. I know. Look, I had three miles per hour to play with there. It's still got the Clarion pull-out stereo. I'm not going to pull it out while you're driving. That might not be a good idea. Well, you could always try and put it back in. Before you need third or fifth or something. <laughs> there you go, I'm in fourth. Go for it. Oh! oh Marvellous. That's, that. that's almost as sweet as the exhaust noise. And then you've got to carry the stereo around with you. It's a marvellous anti-theft um, device. I've just found these in the glove box. I wonder where they're from. I wonder if they're important. I mean, they, the they, they look snapped to me. Were they on the car when we started? I don't know. I have refused to confirm. But they can go back in there with a random screw. Who doesn't love a random screw? Let's go and see how this second generation, sorry, third generation MX5 compares. We've already decided we don't like the interior very much. Uh, I mean, it feels like an MX5 still, so that's good. Let's see how much of this red line we can make use of on the next bit. I believe that's quite quick to see. That is, isn't it? Yeah. But you know something, it doesn't feel as fast as the first one. It, it hasn't got that zing, even though it, the engine seems to rev even more. So it revs more, it's more refined, it's probably more economical. It says yeah, it does it's, it's, got, the it's got more torque, I'll give it that. It's still got a lovely little slick gear change with six gears. We are in six. Maybe if I put it in six, it won't shout at me. All my video's gone all wobbly. You don't want that pointing at me. No. It can't handle the G-force. Just like my wind can't handle the hair. Hey, hey. At least you have hair. Uh, ah. Yeah. Whoa. Well, I nearly didn't have a hat either. Yeah. Got it! Go, go, go! Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Bring in the horses! Die. 
yeah, it needs you to go quite a lot beyond the speed limit to enjoy yourself, allegedly. Yeah, because we're only doing 45. Yes. 60 in this feels like nothing. 60 in the Mark 1 felt fairly rapid. Going in town at 30 miles per hour in the Mark 1 almost felt like you were being naughty. Yeah. Whereas this just feels like even at definitely only 45 miles per hour, it just feels like you're going for a commute. Yeah, the steering isn't quite as engaging. That's a 30 limit. This is going to feel like tedium. We're going to, I could walk quicker. Yeah, 30 mile an hour, not fun in this car. I don't know if you'd rev the nuts off, but they do 30 in first. Oh yeah, quite easily. Well, think. that might make it feel a bit more exciting. Oh yeah, I feel that torque. Oh, yeah, it's never gone so fast right now. <laughs> That's quite a good first gear noise, to be fair. It I is. quite like that. But you can get that noise out of an MGB when it's on runoff. Yeah, yeah, an MGB has one of the best exhausts on a four-cylinder car ever, annoyingly. It's certainly got a bit of talk about it, you can't yeah, deny it's, that. Yeah, it's still got some of the same... Um, turkey character, but really it's trying to had fun with speed, which doesn't really work in a road car. God, I sound boring. I bet this would be fantastic in an auto test, if only there was an opportunity to try such a thing. Oh, getting there. That's right, this afternoon we're taking these latest MX-5s out on track for a bit of a hoon about. Uh, I think they look like they've been stung in the face by a wasp, but um, I'm not going to let that put me off. We'll see what they drive like. And that is indeed the unmistakable sound of a Chinook. Right, let's unleash some sexy. Well, that's all a bit fancy, isn't it? I even get a little diagram to tell me what's going on. Right. We shall find helmets and we shall take one of these out on track. So, here we are. Helmeted up, thankfully in an open face one, so I can actually talk to you. Um, aboard uh, a Mazda MX-5 new one. Um, I think this is some sort of sporty edition. Oh yes, there we go. Z Sport Limited Edition, one of ten. Sorry, 10 of 300. So if you see this car for sale, know it has been thrash, thrashed mightily. It's all a bit different to the Mark 1, isn't it? But we'll go and find out how much fun it is. We're gonna go and do a few familiarization laps and then we'll go with some proper gusto. So um, yeah, quite excited. Don't often get to drive on a track. Don't often get to drive a brand new car. So um, fun times. Thank you. Here we go then. Oh, she do not hang about. Oh, 
it doesn't feel the grippiest of surfaces. Suddenly what felt really sporty out on the road feels a bit dubious on a track. Oh, it is still my first lap, so don't pin it on the first lap. Change is magnificent. Oh, this is insane fun. Oh, too deep. control that's killing the fun. I thought I got the traction control turned off but it's kicking in and it's straightening everything up for me. I don't think I want that. Right I'm gonna do one more lap and then we'll cool off a bit. Okay so now I'm in a car which doesn't have a limited slip diff so we'll see if that makes any difference at all. Is it warm? No the engine's still cold. So I might just let that warm up a bit first. There's a lot more wind noise in this fixed briefly one. I think you're better off with a normal conventional roof to be honest. Keeping an eye on my mirrors because there's a racing cup car out here from the American IMSA series so that's quite a bit quicker than we are. There we go we got things warming up nicely let's give it some beans then back straight. a bit more. Bloody hell. I thought I'd really hit the stoppers that time, see what happens, it stops. I think I can safely say that that was entertaining. Well we're about done here, I've um, finished thrashing modern MX-5s around the track, I've just been for a, ra a race, a lap, 
in the full American race spec one, which was um, quite exciting. Um, there go the Mark 1s. Oh, that's Mark 2. Mark 1 to the other side. I like the Mark 1. Yeah, I've just been out in that um, race spec one, which is um, quite exciting. It hasn't necessarily got much more power, but what it has got is much better handling and an uh, absolute ton of grip. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure my insides have entirely recovered from that experience, but it was entertaining nonetheless. But that concludes my day um, at Mazda um, UK's little gathering here. There's no question, these, these two are my favourites. I just love the Mark 1. Scares me slightly, but next year, in 2019, these cars are 30 years old. How old does that make me feel? But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I'll see you in a future video. Farewell. <laughs> that was something else, all right. Was that fun? Yep, I soiled myself <laughs> several times over. If you hadn't, I'd be disappointed. <laughs>